Welcome to Currency Watch. This is Chris Keen from a keenpointofview.com. We had an interesting result to the FOMC meeting today. Most were expecting some sort of quantitative easing to be announced, but it was uh, into up to the number of $500 billion worth of securities over the next uh, next year or so. But wasn't what was announced was a slightly different plan. It is the uh, guaranteed purchase of up to $40 billion worth of mortgage-backed securities every month on an eliminate, um, in an eliminated time frame, basically to when the Fed believes that the uh, the economy is improving and unemployment our numbers are coming lower this has led to an interesting day um, an interesting result to the um, in the price action following the meeting most of the pairs weren't sure exactly how to react M most moved up initially 40 50 pips only to fall back rapidly and then slowly about 30 40 minutes after the initial uh, meeting heading into the press conference the pairs moved up uh, to their respective channel line resistances and support levels whether this is going to lead this heading into uh, Asian and European trading and tomorrow's Friday's trading is going to be a bit interesting because people are, are going to have be able to have some time to digest the uh, full effects of the of the plan that is going to be implemented. But what I'm going to keep my eyes on heading into this trading is to, first off the USD JPY because what is interesting about this this pair is that it did not fall down or break down. Um, which would would be which was the expected effect of, if additional quantitative easing was announced the pair did move down briefly towards the 77 level but was quickly brought back up and is above the uh, moved back above the uh, the lows around 7735 and now is sitting around 7750 as long as the pair remains above uh, this this 4 hour wick around 7735 we could see an additional push higher but if the cross continues to move down overnight towards the 77 level or even further towards to 76 we will see that the um that that the the, the liquid, that dollar weakness would probably most definitely be at play and but with this particular pair we would have to be concerned about intervention from the Japanese government which has been rumored to maybe be uh could maybe be uh triggered at a, a move down towards the 77 or the 76 area uh the next pair that I'm keeping an eye on obviously is the euro usd just cuz the euro usd as you can see, has moved up towards the top of this uh, ascending channel that it has been riding in for the majority of the majority of the month so far. And any move up towards the top of the channel resistance around one oh one oh thirty could probably find um, resistance in the short term, and we could see a pullback. The pair does appear to be a little bit overbought, but you're not sure how the news is going to be taken in Asia as more buyers may come into the scene. Uh, the next pair I'm going to keep an eye on is the Aussie USD, because you can see the Aussie USD did move up and touch this descending trend line that has capped the price action over uh, since last February. Uh, the pair did move up and touch it once, once, once uh, a few months ago, and you can see it was a very decisive turnaround at that moment. So the um, so what we're going to do is uh, keep a look and look, keep a look, watch on this price action, and see if we get a break down below the uh, 10530 level, which was the price resistance uh, heading into today's trading. And if we get a firm close below this level on a four-hour on a four-hour chart, it could be an indication that the market may be a little bit overbought, and we could see selling coming into the short term. And the last pair I'm keeping an eye on is the Great Britain USD, because the Great Britain USD, similar to the Aussie, had a descending trend line that had capped the price action around 10630. They pair has broken above it and it is currently sitting above uh, 20 pips above above that level as long as the cross remains above this level I would be the bias would be for the for the pair to continue to move higher or lower what we're going to what I'm going to be looking for is a four hour close above or below this level to um, to help give us an indication of where exactly this cost could be going in the short term. As for data heading into the rest of the week, it's uh, it probably won't be too relevant because it will mostly be focusing on the digestion of the the new uh, new monetary policy that the Fed has placed into action. All right, that is it for Currency Watch. This is Chris Keen from a Keen Point of View. Everybody, keep your trades keen and play it safe.